Steve, how we're going? Hope you're well. Happy Wednesday, like, subscribe, etc. This week, though they part this week, I've been looking at Pazinski's disintegration loops. Now, wondering what I can do, how I can simulate that within the sort of digital realm of that like, decaying tape and everything like that. So I'll run through. I did three separate ways of doing it, and the third one that I ended up on worked the best. First way I tried doing this, I was like, right, I'm going to set up an effect chain. I'm going to do dry. I'll do one with one echo. I'll put noise, wobble. Brilliant. Number two, two echoes, noise, wobble. Bit of wobble just on that one. But that one's delaying it by another measure and another one because we've got three delays. Measure, measure, measure. We're adding noise all the time. And I thought, yeah, I can do that. But you can see up there on the CPU that's getting a little bit high and it clips out fairly quickly. So when I got up to five different ones, I got as far as seven and it just kind of killed the CPU. And I thought, right, I can't really disintegrate with that. So method number one, out the window. Method number two, I was like, right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get an audio track. I'll get it fed in from the track that I want to sample. And then the next audio track will get fed in from that one and so on so forth all the way down the line again you can see the cpu clipped as i opened it but i got quite a reasonable sounding thing so if i play this synth loop now we've got a cpu clip there not exactly ideal But you can hear how that's decaying with each separate one. So with this, I used wide and dirty, I used vinyl, poxy crush, boost and crunch, an echo and a flanger. Now the only problem is by the time you get to the end of this one, it starts to take on harmonic content as well. So the more that you do this with the things like the boost and crunch, with the vinyl, the wide and dirty, it takes on the harmonic content of those and kind of doesn't mess up in the right way. So I did do variations of number two. So this is a slight variation of number two. If I play this pad, the other thing I've done with this is the send effect to the reverb, I increased it a little bit each time. So by the time it gets to the end, it's quite sort of rich and warm, but still, the CPU is juddering, a little bit of a mess. Um, if you put too much into it, the CPU just goes to hell because of all the effects that are chaining and following each other. So then I did a different variation of number two. And with this variation, you can see we've got a chain of things there. You can see I've already recorded something there. So if I play on here, you'll see that it goes, takes the audio from scene 12, which is this. And then what I do is change that to five. And then this is going to go around in a constant loop and each time it decays the audio only using two of the redux and one echo just to, to okay. so what i did notice and what i realized from the other ones is actually the noise part of echo creates a huge amount of cpu usage and i don't really know why what will create a little bit you put noise on it just whacks the cpu right up so that was my kind of initial issue with it so as I like this, it's not practical because I can't automate it. I have to do it manually when I want to do it. So I have used this in the final piece and let's move on to what I actually used. So this is number three. And what I'm using in this is a feedback loop. So what I've done with this is channel one that we've called Catalyst. That is 100% to send A. So that goes to send A and then the feedback channel here takes its audio from send A and in turn send A is turned up to 100% on the channel so what happens is that keeps going backward and forward between the two now rather than make a really big feedback loop that keeps on building I've got an echo here so it's delaying it all the time I put a little bit of dirt and grit preset 4% glue compressor limiter utility because I wanted to mono it because it, I didn't want it to get too far out of control stereo wise uh, I did have an amp on it, but I turned that off. And then a little bit on the EQ because when it fed back on itself, it got a little bit out of control. So what I'll do is I'll speed up the tempo to 90 so you can hear what's going on with this because otherwise I'll be waiting ages for the repeat. So that's feeding into there. 
goes in away and because of the delay it then comes back on itself. So this is a perpetual loop that keeps on going. There's a little bit of tweaking there to get it to not go mad with the volume and again that's what the compressor and the limiter are for to keep it under control. Now over time, and you'll hear the full track at the end, over time this decays in a really really nice way and I've done the same with the vocal so I put a little bit of a vocal on it pretty much all of the same stuff going on but I did add the boost and crunch this time and then I've taken a little bit out of these two areas so the sibilance was causing a problem and just accentuated the upper end of it as well. Now you can hear that already starting to get really messed up. So what happens is over the course of the whole track that gets really pulverised and messed and it sounds absolutely fantastic. The vocal sounds really really creepy. So the other thing about this is this, the monitor is set to in. If you don't set it to in you won't get the feedback loop. So if I bang that back to 30 BPM, and the reason it's at 30 BPM is because it was just too fast and the maximum you can do synchronization on the echo is one, one bar, uh, one measure, sorry. So I thought, right, I'll just bang it down to 30 BPM and I can sort of impro improvise everything else. So the rest of the sounds that I've gone on here, um, I used that for resampling, but I didn't actually do anything. I've got a dubby noisy patch, which is just a preset, little bit of noise, a little bit bouncing around. This is the same thing again, but I've added it later on to add a little bit of depth and a little bit of bass note. This is using Crystallizer Effect, which I did a video on very, very recently. And also another one that I did myself called Spectral Echoes. So you can see we've got a couple of echoes, Spectral Resonator, Spectral Blur. And then we've also got the Valhalla Room directly on the channel. You'll see other ones are sent to Valhalla Room, which is on there, Send Beat. And I've got that to a reasonable big reverb, which just gives it a lot of bit nice depth. Uh, the end is just this bit at the end. So if I just scroll out, this was a bit too loud to have at the end. So I just duplicated and had it a little bit quieter. Uh, the high loops is using that sort of string thing, a little bit of echo on it. The deep refrain, all I've done is just taken the top end of it and that sparkles track. The vocal track, I'm using exactly the same thing that goes into the feedback vocal. And then I've got another one that's distant, so it's a little bit quieter there. To disintegration, this is using one of the things I showed you earlier, which just had a loop pass through it that gradually decays and messes up over time. And I did it again with this one, which was a resample of another disintegration thing that I was doing. Uh, and again with the deep noise, another disintegration thing that just sort of gradually gets a little bit messed up. Nothing compared to what happens over the course of the track. And then the higher noise, this is the same as the deep noise, but I've just put it up an octave and two octaves in places and just made it a little bit thinner and a little bit more filling out that top end. And then this track here is, this gradually decays using automation. If I bring up the automation window. You see I've got the dry wet of the dirt and grit and also I've got the sample rate so at the end it just goes horribly crushed. So I haven't done an awful lot to this, it's based on, the whole feel of it is all based on Brzezinski's disintegration. So the whole piece, they've got two channels that are gradually disintegrating and messing up over the course of the track. I'm going to let the track play so you can hear what I've done with the disintegrating bits. I mean, it's not a complete track. It still needs a little bit of work doing to it. I've got to just put everything in its right place. But the drawback of doing this kind of technique is that when you get to, say, four minutes, if you want to go back or go forward, the vocal keeps on repeating and you can't stop it by stopping it. It doesn't stop and play. It just carries on repeating until you turn, you get rid of that in on the audio. So you end up listening to it all the way through to find out what the other pieces are like compared to the vocal and the repeating loop and it gets a little bit mad so hopefully you can see what I've done on this any questions give us a shout if you want to get any more in-depth information give us a shout but I would encourage you have a play around with these feedback loops they are absolutely incredible and a massive load of fun to play around in and you'll hear when this finishes scrub to the end if you don't want to listen to it the vocal especially just gets really, really weird and it just sounds fantastic. If you want me to give any, form, any more information on creating the feedback loop, give us a shout. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. See you later.
Thank you.